Before we start, have you heard about the Monster Hunter film with Mila Jokovic? Um, it's the Pokemon movie. Have you seen that? <gasps> but, but I thought they did one every year. No, this is something, this is a completely different beast. This is a live action thing. It's Pikachu, but he's a detective and he's wearing a little... And it's rated R. That did get you excited, didn't it? And it's just fucking Pikachu and Stephen Colbert going around solving crimes. It's just a fucking, it's just 90 minutes of stand-up. Um, but it's Ryan Reynolds that does the voice of Pikachu in this. And I, I, so I don't I really have... <laughs> Who's going to play Ash? Please be Will Smith. I think they're kind of I don't know, retconning it a little bit. They don't have Ash. That'd be ridiculous. Well, the reason that I, I mentioned Monster Hunter was because Mila Jokovic, jo or Jovovich, sorry. I always said Jokovic. I don't Mila Jovovich is playing Lieutenant Artemis. That is a fantastic She'll be out of that name. dress when she meets Jim West. I'll tell you now. <laughs> <laughs> Lieutenant Artemis. She is 43, and her co-star is a big hawk called Archimedes. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, now that we're talking about that, I think that whatever Monster Hunter is, obviously it's another Capcom game, that's weird. Um, I think that the co-star should be the guy who plays Wesker, but the director, Paul Watshit Anderson, he just says, do it like Max Headroom. <laughs> and that's all the movie is. <laughs> Everything she does is like constantly he's interrupting her. Like Puffin, like he thinks he's live. There's no cameras or anything. They're in the desert. And he's just constantly, constantly talking utter shit. Like, I've got 20 seconds to interrupt Mila Jovovich. Yeah, he's never moving. He's hey! just a bolt still, but he's just kind of twitching left to right, looking around. That's all it is. Which brings us to the topic of today's podcast, which is Max Headroom, the head from Art Attack, Chris Tarrant. What are these things? Sopranos, 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 Altos, you name it. I don't know how to make heads or tails of that, I'm afraid. Anyway, welcome to the GRS show. Hey, Damien, you look like a fucking bitch on heat. Thank you very much. I'll tell you exactly why. Do you remember Pepperamis? <laughs> yes, I do. Ah! It's me, Aid Edmondson! He yeah. was a bit of an animal, as the adverts would tell you, ad nauseum. I after, was... after Rick Mail, that was the best stuff he ever did with those Pepperami adverts. I, <laughs> no, honestly, he's in fucking casualty now. Oh, really? No, isn't he in Star Wars as well? He's in Star Wars. I have absolutely... I which one? I haven't seen, like, the last... Uh, I saw The Force Awakens. I haven't seen anything mm -hmm. else mm -hmm. in the last mm -hmm. few years. Mm -hmm. It was one of those then. It was, it was, <laughs> if you haven't seen him in it, it was in one of those that you haven't seen. Pepper Armies, right? Um, mm -hmm. So I was, I was traveling through uh, the tube station. By the way, if you're just tuning in, this, this podcast is about Mel Gibson. So go on, Pepper Armies. Yes, yes, Pepper Armies. Um... I saw the most fucking horrendous advert for them, right? So okay, let me guess what it is. Um, when you say horrendous, you mean disgusting. I mean, for me, it was quite... I thought it was fascinating. Was it some sort of monster being jammed into a mincemeat machine and out of the machine? The mincemeat machine has something on it, like, written on it, like, extra man or some shit, and out of it is coming a pepper army. No, it's, you, you, I, I'd be very surprised if you got it. Um, I, I reckon... Okay, there so will be more, some more wacky than that. Uh, I wouldn't say wacky, it's kind of disturbed. All right, is it, um, is it uh, the guy in Aquaman and the guy in The Wrestler, my, <laughs> Mickey Rourke, is it them and they're, they're doing the scene out of, not Last Exit in Brooklyn, what's it called, where they're, they're, they've got a double-ended dildo and they've got to knock each other off the table. What's it called? Uh, Requiem for a Dream? Yeah, yeah, it's that. It's that, but it's those two guys doing it with a pepper army. Is it that? Oof. No, but that's it's it's kind of on that level. All right. Maybe so we should tell tell people what a fucking pepper army is because I imagine if you're under forty and not from Britain, you know when you go to a big supermarket, you go to the meat section and they've got all the different types of meat. The, the it's all the same meat, but it all costs different amounts and it's all in different packaging and it's just quality. They don't say that, but it's quality. You can spend five pounds on 12 sheets of ham and they'll be good right someone will have actually like looked at them for worms and stuff for maggots and things right you can do that spend an ungodly amount of money on crap lunch meat or you can do what most people do and get the sort of like two pound one and you get like 20 pieces and they're all right it's a bit watery or or you can go for the really cheap one right and it's like, it's, it, it's the same amount. It's like 20 slices of ham, but instead of being £2.50, it's like £1.50 
or something. And that makes your and, mouth water when you see that. What a fucking savings. Right? And you just, oh, it's just nothing else. And then, and then you get to the, the, the meat <laughs> that they only sell in certain parts of, of Britain or they only sell in certain, certain supermarkets. I'm thinking Morrison's. Uh, and it's like, it's pound fifty, and it's like a stack of like 300 sheets of ham. Like yeah. You need to sling it over your shoulder to get it home. The packaging must have cost more than the actual fucking meat. And it's like 3% meat. That's what a pepperami is. <laughs> pepperami is when you'd like turn your nose up at all those fucking deals and they cart this, this meat off because it's well past its sell-by date. And they just let it dry in the sun and they compress it under the wheel of the tyre and they peel it out of the tread and you have these perfect like straws of dried fucking jerky like meat. That's what a pepperami is. Do you remember what then in... it will find its way back into supermarkets, but this time round it looks so much more delicious. But pepperoni yeah. isn't really meat; it's like thirty percent meat. I have, I have absolutely no idea. I mean, like if that thirty percent, like li- the providence it's lips of it, you can and, and eyes, and it wears boots. Remember? <laughs> yes, and it eats itself, you know, quite gratuitously. Nice TV. <laughs> pepperoni. It's a bit of an animal. It's a stick of pepperoni, basically, but called pepperoni. <laughs> what, well, what's our consumer then? What, people who like pepperoni? Yeah, but what's the personality? Well, somebody who's fucking mad. <laughs> a pugilist. Because that's all I remember from those adverts. It wasn't the pepperoni eating itself going, mmm. It was the pepperoni eating itself going, ah! Right? Well, that or just, like, fucking chasing people down the fucking street that would, like, potentially discard it getting halfway through. It's like, I've, I'm better than this. <laughs> Yeah, so this was the first time I'd seen pepperoni on a the TV slag screen of snacks. <laughs> in like 15 years, right? Mm. And it was baffling. So it was, it wasn't just one TV screen. Um, it was, it's got three TV screens above this archway, and the advert like takes place across all three. So it's an interesting format, right? And and it's all what they've they've chosen to shoot. It's all kind of like extreme close-ups. It's all really washed out. It's all in like night vision. So what you see first is you can't, you don't really know what you're seeing, but you see like this. You got this blonde woman um, just kind of dancing around. You see is that Adrian Edmondson? <laughs> it's uh, like it's done up to look like she's in a nightclub. She's kind of jumping around doing her own thing, this, that, and the other. Again, the night vision. It's kind of it's a bit bit kind of seedy. And there it's comes cut, the like, foam. You got shots of again. You start to recognize like. You've got this stick just kind of like flailing wildly and it goes back and forth and you kind of start to make out that it's the pepperami, right? She's obviously in a nightclub. She's leaving, right? And it's, I don't know, it's not clear if he, that she's leaving with this pepperami, right? Mm-hmm. But then it kind of, it starts flashing with, with the next part of this advert. And what you see is you see something, it cuts like out of nowhere. It's really difficult I'm just I, like going, going through it. I'm really struggling, but it just cuts to um, a pepperami in the womb, right? Like, in the womb of a pepperami, or in the womb of something that well, another but, pepperami you, has. You've, you've, you've obviously it, it's set. Yeah, it's it's set up that you know you've, that you've got this woman, so it's presumably her womb, right? So okay. she's left the club, um, and the pepperami has followed hot on her heels, either knowingly or unknowingly. Um, it's not quite clear, but in light of what we've been discussing, I would say that what happened next was probably not consensual. And obviously, you know, this pepperoni has made a point of inseminating her as well. So now she, this is later on down the line, and she is obviously with child. So it's cutting to the, these shots in utero of this pepperoni, right? Kind of, kind of growing there. And like the, the product itself is there's a new type of pepperoni. It's being made with beef and you've got this new fucking pepperoni. It's really beefy, this, that, this, that, and the other. So they're making a new pepperoni, right? That's what he's doing. But what happens next is this, this, this little baby pepperoni is growing. You just see that the, the dad appears in womb, right? So having, having inseminated this poor woman, he has now gone back and found his way inside her again, but this time to harass his his unborn child, right? And it, again, it's just cut erratically in, in between all these different things, and then you just see him chewing on the umbilical cord of his of this baby pepperami, and then it just out of nowhere it just cuts to the new pepperami, which is this big kind of muscle-bound pepperami, right? Which looks nothing like what you've seen, 
Just, is it just a thicker pepperami? It's just a thicker pepperami made right. out of beef. Yeah, it's right. a bit oh, beefier. Beef. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm. And so the Muslims can eat it. That's what's well, fourth. Potentially, I, that, I'm sure that was a consideration in the boardroom. We're, 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 we need to broaden our demographic. <laughs> it was, so, it, it was like, sat around, and someone was going, "Do you know that more than two percent of people in Harrogate are Muslim?" Muslim? Well, they they're not eating pepperonis. That's a whole. There's millions of people. <laughs> and that's how it happened. All right, that, he's finally getting the mouth again. Someone, someone get the uh, someone get that block of wood. He, if you don't, just wedge it in there. He's gonna, he's gonna bite down on his tongue. Otherwise, it's gonna, it's, it's gonna be a huge bloody mess. He's having the a flamethrower. So just put I'll him gently down to the floor. Gently down to the floor. He'll calm himself down. Christ, cold Ian, blanket, you, cold wet blanket on the head. It's the last okay. time you're doing PCP on your fucking frosties for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> and in the middle of the boardroom, no less. It's quite a severe and intense, quick reaction. So from that, mm. from that incident, pepperami feticide was born. Yeah, basically. So what what happened? It just cuts to the shot of the like the new pepperoni when it's not. It's just gone to like you know a perfect kind of like you know product shot. So it's it's, it's cut out all the night vision, all the wash out. So it's just a, it's it's a frame shot of this new pepperoni, the, the kind of like beefy mascot, and the, the product itself. It's a bit beefier than what you remember, or something like that. I can't remember what the tagline was. Something asinine like that. But I just I couldn't wrap it's my back head around what. And we got rid of the horse meat, except in Ireland and France. <laughs> I just I couldn't wrap my head around like the, the the inferred like rape and then the kind of like pepperoni hands on coat hanger abortion that preceded it, <laughs> and it would just be in such a hugely public forum. I kind of I feel mean, like. But in, f- in fairness to that pepperoni, I'm not saying that you know sort of backstreet coat hanger abortions, you know, are obviously awful. They're obviously awful, but it's you know, it sounds like he put in a lot of effort. Again, well, he he took the task in hand, so th- th- there's there's somewhat a, a degree of integrity there. Well, if we haven't turned you off, welcome to the Good Show. We're talking about those interesting comebacks and how we, as uh, industry experts, are facilitating that. Uh, basically, our advice is just ignore it, Mel. Just ignore all the stuff. <laughs> just ignore it. What? Ignore the hate, or ignore the kind of ignore the hate the, and all, the, the desire to kind of have a career again. Like, like, listen. That woman over there, she's a journalist, but she's a woman, Mel. She'll probably ask you about all that shit. So uh, let's not do an interview with her. I guess that's what I would say if I was his, if I was his Bell Pottinger pu- publicist or whatever. <laughs> and just, just basically keep him in a box and just create this elaborate kind of illusion that he's a movie star again. That the things, <laughs> the project that he's plying his name and talent to are actually being published and receiving acclaim, where it's all just yeah, it's just an elaborate ruse. He's just there. He's just no, been I, fed these I just, I bogus just make, news reports. Just make deals with, um, with organizations, you know, just TV companies and such, and I'll just say, well, this person and this person and this person who you want to interview... Uh, they're all my clients, and they're not going to talk to you unless you also fucking interview Mel Gibson, who's my client as well. That's what I do, and that's what's exactly happened. He, he's <laughs> he's wedged his way back in, and, and it's all it's all because of that. Someone's doing, someone's helping him. Oh yeah. So well, what, but what does well, he yeah. have in the what does he have in the pipeline then? Because he hasn't come up on my radar. But obviously well, you know, he was the... nominated for an Oscar last year. Oh fuck it now. For directing Hackshaw Ridge, he's got fucking Passion of the Christ two coming out. You're joking. This time it's personal. Oh. I didn't realise Hacksaw Ridge was... Oh, that was... was thanks for that. that what, did you have to do that into the microphone? Oh, all the time, yeah. It's, it's like listening to a geriatrics library. Now that you say it's all I can think day. about. Oh. I haven't had those in years. I could slaughter one right now. Fucking hell. Really? You couldn't slaughter it, though. You'd just end up chipping your teeth. You have to you have to give him a good old suck for a oh, while. Yeah. I keep the, it on the outside of my teeth and just work it with the lips before it became became the, manageable. They've got those Werther's Werther's original toffees now. What's your favourite sort of toffee, Damien? Do you like toffees? Have you ever had taffy? What about a toffee hammer? I had one of those once. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I've never been sure what taffy, in fact, is. Is it just We've an American this. bastardization We've, of the word toffee? We've done this. We've done this. Have we? Yeah, like really? ten, ten episodes ago. Yeah. <laughs> I have a memory of a goldfish. Can you like me again? <laughs> I think our conclusion was was basically yeah, it is. Toffee and taffy are 
if they are different, they're they're as different as prawns and shrimp. Like maybe they oh, are okay. different, but not not really. And I remember saying it with this much disdain and disgust I mean, as well. If, David, if, so I, if, I, together. if I was an alien who'd come across the universe and I'd spent like the last 20 years learning the English language so I could learn all about the world and human beings, if I had to read a fucking chapter on the difference between toffee and taffy, I'd be pretty annoyed. I'd consider that a massive waste of time. Much like explaining this to me now is I'm, 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 I'm sure. You, don't, or, you sound a little bit worked up. <laughs> Oh, no, hang on. Here we go. Toffee versus Taffy. Oh, okay. Right. So Taffy had Firewire until they phased it out. I see. <laughs> How's your computer? Oh, my God, we're just doing this. Uh, it's, it's struggling, actually. It's really, really Is bad. It? And uh, I don't, yeah, I mean, like, I had a previous laptop. I did the same thing to it. And when that happened, it, it fucked the backlight on the keyboard. You know, there was some physical wear. But this time, not so much. So I don't believe that, you know, that's the real problem here. I so think you... it's the hardware itself, which is just inherently flawed. And it's got nothing to do with how I treat it, but, you know, on a very personal level. What did you spill on it? <laughs> Come. <laughs> I thought you said a drink. I, I did. And I stand by that. Oh, God, Damien. Yes. <laughs> You know, I, I looked at Taffy on Wikipedia, and Wikipedia says, Taffy, American English, or choose British English. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think what it meant to say was, Taffy, American English, or choose dog English, is a type of candy. Choose, I have no idea what the fuck that is. <laughs> I am a British man, and I have never heard of that. No, I, the only thing I could say would be comparable would be chew it. <laughs> Chew it, Soros. He likes to chew it. They were a type of song from the '90s where a man just says, "I like to chew it, chew it" over and over again, whilst <laughs> women shake their booties into the camera. There was no melodic or rhythmic progression. It was just a man slowly breaking down. It was a statement of fact repeated again and again. But it was the '90s. It was considered trendy. Well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> well, listen. Let's start talking about Mel Gibson. But before we do that. Uh, I just wanted to say, not obviously not related to Mel Gibson or anything, uh, but we did get an answer on why I saw so many Mein Kampf books in India. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it's apparently um, young Indian men adopted it as a kind of self-help book. Thanks for the person who responded. I checked out the link and everything, and how weird. Well, well, I mean, I guess it's satisfying to have an answer, but I was kind of hoping for something a little bit more elaborate and in depth. That like there's this, there's this long story in it, but uh, I would quite I, like to talk to one of those young men after reading it and sort of go through it and be like, now this part here where it talks about the Jews, do you know what a Jew is? <laughs> and they just kind of look with this blank stare, completely not comprehending a word you're saying. They just nod politely. I remember there was a, a really, really nice, incredibly camp man at the hotel I was staying at in Jodhpur, and he walked up to me. I, I, you know, I talked to him before, and he said, there was someone here a few weeks ago, uh, a European, who said uh, he's gay. What's a gay? What's a gay, <laughs> Mr. George? What, what is a gay? I do not understand. And I was like, well, a gay, okay, so a gay is a man who, uh, uh, well, likes other men. And the guy, the guy understood it, and he's nodding, and he's like, oh, wow, okay, that's really interesting. <laughs> so it's, you know, was was there like a legitimate comprehension there? Because I kind of feel like, you know, that would come to, that would come with some kind of like instant revulsion. No, he was very nice about it, and he was he acted like he just wanted to know. I think what he was doing was for some reason saying to me, "I'm not gay." Right. Okay. But you know, I don't. I've never. Oh, and I I didn't even think that that could even happen. It never even. I never even considered it. That's how straight I am. <laughs> no, I'll, put my, I'll pull my trousers back up. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you very cordially answer his question, you know, in a very succinct and comprehensible way. Nods his head, and you just see him walk out. You see him go through a door and immediately light a fucking torch. Like, all right, lads, we're off. Well, he. I think he was talking about it because um, I think I was there whilst homosexuality was legalized. Right. Okay. I think. Yeah. That's why I was there. <laughs> it was in my eyes it was the new promised land and as usual it thoroughly disappointed well what one thing no one we... knew what a gay was i was like a guru you get you see men holding hands all the time walking around okay. ho holding hands and it's just a friendship thing 
not it's not gay at all. It's just, they're just friends. I so, sorry when you started on that. I thought this was going to be like the setup for a, for a joke. But like, wow, how, how how fascinating. Yeah, right. I wonder if Mel Gibson would let me hold his hand if I, you know, if I said to him, "Don't worry, don't worry, <laughs> Mel. I'm not gay. I'm not a Jew, and I'm not a woman." I think he'd make a very public affair of breaking your wrist. Do you? I think so. I don't think he would take to that too kindly, even with like a pre-existing relationship, let alone the fact that you don't know him too well. And I suppose you will just approach him in the street as a complete unknown. So let me just grab part of your body. I think he might resent that. And would that be because I look a bit dusky at night? <laughs> of course, it would be the nighttime, wouldn't it? You don't, you don't emerge uh, during the daylight. He think, thinks I'm some sort of uh, foreigner or something. Hmm. Well, I don't know. Maybe if you... Oh, if you English. Oh, the... there we go. That's, that's what did me. Fuck. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> maybe clean up the facial hair, you know, kind of bring back the boyish good looks. And maybe, maybe, you won't, maybe you won't unnerve him so much. Well, I don't know. Do you think he'd break my wrist? I don't know. He's, mm. I think he would probably like pop you in the mouth. Yeah. Mel Gibson, 63 and five foot six. So I think we'd be quite equally matched. <laughs> I did. I knew. I knew he was short. Five foot three. Did you say or five foot six? Sixty-three. Five foot six. There we go. I said four foot nine. God, open your ears. <laughs> I'd love it if Mel Gibson was four foot nine. Maybe like the shorter he gets, like the more kind of remote he becomes with his like bigger trees. Like if he were to just keep like literally- shaving his legs down, and he is like four foot two, and he's, he's literally he's dragging still- his knuckles on the floor because his legs are so short. <laughs> Yes, ex- this, that precisely. But he can still spout the same horrible bullshit from his mouth. But because he's like so non-threatening and comical in appearance, people just write it off and say, yeah, that's, that's our Mel. And he doesn't have anywhere near the same kind of like social or political backlash. And that's how he gets his in. Well, but he can't, get it, he can't necessarily get his foot in the door because he has like sheared that down in a meat grinder. I suppose for, for many people, Mel Gibson really kind of is most famous for a fall from grace when he was pulled over by the cops, drunk driving, and he gave this enormous rant on the Jews to a woman, to a, a female police officer that he called Sugar Tits. <laughs> Two years before that, that, he was on Forbes's most powerful in the world celebrity list. Have you come across the Mel Gibson tapes from 2010? No, enlighten me. So Mel Gibson's girlfriend at the time recorded him several times uh, with obviously without his permission or knowledge, uh, where he's talking all sorts of eclectically vile shit down the phone to her. And how he did not know that she was recording it, I do not know. Because he's like saying things like, I'm threatening, I'll put you in a fucking rose garden, you cunt. You understand that? Because I'm capable of it. He's saying stuff like that, and she's going, You're going to answer one day, boy, you're going to answer. I believe louder, I had that, please. that rape thing paraphrased in an article at the time. He said that if she gets raped by n- she deserves it. By a pack of n- he said. What should we change n- to? Numpties. <laughs> <laughs> he said if he... And use that take, that one take as well, to kind of <laughs> to censor it. <laughs> he said that if she gets raped by n- numpties, she deserves it. By a pack of n- numpties, he said. What should we change n- numpties to? If she got raped by a pack of n- numpties. Then it was her fault, and she brought it on herself. I mean, I should be laughing at that. That's, that's fucking atrocious. That's absolutely fucking vile. It's despicable. Do you remember when PewDiePie said numpty live on stream? I wish that what we would, you know, what we're literally talking about is actually what happened, because I would love to see that. <laughs> and that, you know, a furore around that, that word in particular. Yeah. Do you know what? I fucking hate you. I don't love you anymore. You get out. You look like a bitch on heat, right? Get out there. Do you know what? I couldn't care less if you're raped by a pack of plums. <laughs> I'll tell you now. Ooh, e-bye gum. Fuck off, I'm taking the whippet out with me. <laughs> the whippet? The whippet, yeah. You know what a whippet is. I, I, I'm thinking of a dog. Can I ask you a question? Go ahead. I think we all want the answer to this. Mm-hmm. What the fuck does sugar tits even mean? <laughs> okay. I don't know, ask the guy that said it, it wasn't me. <laughs> Obviously, before it was all in this kind of pallid white with the, the you know, with the aluminium. What this now comes available in space grey. It's called. Oh, that yes. does change it though. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's slightly darker gray. So there you go. It looks a little bit sexier. Does it look yeah. sexier? Because, you know, the song goes, I don't want no darker. I don't want no darker. <laughs> I don't want no numpties. <laughs> oh, shit. Were those numpties packing burners? Come on, motherfuckers. Are those numpties going to drop some street knowledge on me? Numpty starts to mumble, they want to rumble. Mix them and cook them in a pot <laughs> like gumbo. Oh, it's just it's a nice little touch. Which Me and you can go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, Damien. No, maybe. I'm knocking Numpties out of the box daily, yeah, weekly, monthly, and yearly. <laughs> Until them dumb motherfuckers see clearly. Well, if anyone doesn't know, we're Straight very, Straight out of Compton, another crazy-ass Numpty. More punks I smoke, yo. My rep gets bigger. I'm a badass motherfucker, and you know this. But the pussy-ass Numpties... <laughs> <laughs> to me it's kind of funny the attitude showing an empty driving <sighs> oh man well okay well that's it goodbye all right we'll do like what 30 more seconds of mel gibson talking <laughs> okay, and then yeah. we're kind of up to par really squeeze it out okay <laughs> like a like a hot biscuit pinch out that chocolate hot dog do you think that given that mel gibson pleaded guilty to Hitting his girlfriend, apparently while she was holding their baby and all of that. Uh, do you think that he should be welcomed back into Hollywood? Because I, I don't think he should be stopped or anything. I think he's, he's, he's welcome to kind of try on his own merits, I guess. Um, but if anyone kind of wants to... Is looking to kind of adulate him, then they can fuck off. He's not yeah. a nice human being. Depends. Yeah, I, I mean, so mm. hang on. You've obviously the, there's the an audience for his... him, though. Oh, but yeah, no doubt. Like I'm on, sure on, are... on all those tapes, it's people defending him. On the tapes, are people defending him? Well, well, people are mainly saying that she sort of trapped him by recording him because she ta she taped quite a lot, and I, I think they have a point. I think it does sort of make her look calculated, but nonetheless, he did still say all those things to her, and it did sound out, it did sort of sound like he was drunk and angry and it probably wasn't the first time he was fucking like that it's like well, if, you, if you look up the fucking video of sean connery where over the course of 60 seconds he essentially says yeah i think you should hit women it's the only thing that's, yeah, yeah it is weird the only thing that's kind of admirable is how he stuck his ground that's kind of almost that seems quite novel to me but what I've, what he's saying is still it's vile <laughs> I mean, I agree, you know, I, at least he said what he thinks, but... Uh, I don't know, I mean, if you're going to Is that something these in, in people, these people's brains that are like, well, I do think that slapping women is fine, but most people don't, so I'll just fuck... And I am on fucking ABC, talking to Barbara Walters. I bet she doesn't think it's fine. Maybe I should just uh, just say, nah, didn't say it, or something. Mm, fuck that, yeah. I mean, yeah, she was obviously going in really fucking hot, so I don't know. I, I, I guess, it's like, Sean Connery's... A, fucking belligerent man anyway but I, I guess he presumed let's just fucking double down that's it yeah I did <laughs> if the situation you know calls for it then I will obviously you know not, not with a fist but yeah I've, uh, I've got that League of Gentlemen movie on the horizon that'll probably get me a couple of Oscars so fuck that I'm untouchable baby but you know I don't, I don't know I think that if Mel Gibson does want to make movies and stuff I, I don't think it's like he should be banned or anything I just Oh, I don't know. I just wouldn't. I mean, I think obviously people like you and I can obviously look at look at him and say, "What a piece of shit." But I still think there are certain people that will will see him as rigs. Yeah, I think they will. Def they will still look to him. I think there are certain people that, in light of the conservatives, will like look at him as a role model. There are some fucking wretched people out there who will kind of respect the stuff that he's done. I but rate him as an actor and as a and as a director. I mean, I don't rate him like super super as an actor, but I think he's he's got presence. I seem um, to remember when a lot of this was, was actually this was what like two thousand eight or something like that. So I guess it's a couple of years after the fact. The, be the beaver. We, we, we were watching the, be the beaver, and that's beaver. we kept we kept saying that. No, it's actually pronounced beaver. 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 The beaver. Fuck! What did I expect? I just typed beaver into Wikipedia. <laughs> of course, it came up with porn. <laughs> I mean Google. Labia like fucking wide open there. You look. You can almost see straight through if you look up at the right angle. Because <laughs> this woman is completely hollow. Sorry, I should clarify that. That's how that joke works. Beaver film. Will this come up? 
Oh, fuck. Of course it's not going to come up. You've, you've, you've dug your hole even deeper with that. 2011. Okay, so that's after the tapes came out. Okay. Yeah, I liked him in that. Yeah, it seems to remember that was that was the discussion. It's like, well, he's crap. He's a piece of shit, but it's a good performance. The movie's yeah. so-so. Good, good performance from Bell. I rate the performance. He's a piece of shit. Good performance. Yeah. It was that conversation for like 45 minutes, I seem to remember. Do you think the Anti-Defamation League have a a landscape by young Hitler up somewhere? And they're like, yeah, oh, no, no, no. Hitler was an awful person, the worst person ever, but that's a nice painting. <laughs> it's in their foyer. It's in their foyer, yeah. <laughs> Probably not. It's that fucking German shepherd from It's Always Sunny. That's that, That's the thing. Hitler was better than that. <laughs> What a better painter, or yeah, or a better human being than you know most historians have uh, he noted. Was a, he was a better human being than the sort of garbage that would paint that German Shepherd. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm definitely not saying that. I'm saying he was a better painter. I'm not saying he was a good painter. Whatever. He was. A, he was an average. He was a slightly better than average painter. To be honest, I think I think if you'd have managed to somehow give Hitler a couple of bifters when he was about twenty, I think things would have turned out quite differently. <laughs> so the argument is that you don't go back in time to, you know, uh, shoot baby Hitler, but you go back in time and you drug him as a teenager. Or or you, I don't know, or you you, you give him the fucking beating off he needs or something. You relieve the tension somehow. And maybe, yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe that is by putting a fucking tutu into his head. And I say tutu because obviously, you know, you don't want the bullet to come out because you'll need to take the body back with you through time. <laughs> to dump it in the past and that's how the problems arise you see the the Arthurians the... find his body and they're like oh bloody hell look at that that's a neat little symbol I bet it is the Jews this was quite a dark narrative arc for laser block I seem to remember yes because we're we, because we beam in and we're <laughs> we're, in, we're in the well, ash world and you have a boomstick and I have a block <laughs> of wood it was a prerequisite for us being sent back home to our original time it seemed needlessly comp- convoluted but we were game because we were desperate laser block okay if it was you me and mel gibson and the beaver in the beaver starring mel gibson and we had to live on a desert island at any time in history but what time of, of history would it be what time of history would it be Oh, I would say, um, Edwardian era. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, islands were good then. <laughs> I was, was going to say Tudor, I thinking, but... I was thinking 50s because I could I could sort of sit there all lonely and be like, oh man, I'd really love to meet Howard Hawks. And if I ever got off the island, I could. Great, yeah. Mm. I picked an era where there would be flying machines, Damien, because I'd like to see myself getting off this island at some point. <laughs> so you you fucking morons. Era. <laughs> We're trapped here now, you fucker. Yeah, we we need to pick the time where that island is under a flight path. <laughs> it's only the Isle of Man or something like that that we're trapped on. <laughs> it's it's not the Isle of Man, but it's like an, an island sort of like 50 metres off the Isle of Man. It, <laughs> I mean, I do sort of see Mel Gibson as Riggs and as his sort of on-screen persona, and that is appealing. I bet, you know... That's oh, that guy's fun. Couple of drinks, he, yeah. He, he have a wild fucking time. Yes, and and you're right. Only a couple. You see, you got to get it to the threshold, right? Because if you run out of drinks when he's steaming, then you're fucking dead, especially on an island. But if you if you get it so he's like cruising, you can be like, no, nah, we don't have any. He's like, oh man, oh my buzz is gonna die. And you're like, I'm, I know, but he's not gonna get angry. But once you cross the threshold, you're dead. You've either got to go all the way and get him blackout drunk. Yeah, so he's he has to like, lose motor function. Yeah, yeah, because if he runs out of alcohol while he's getting on it, man, That's... there's not going to be a coconut left in the trees. It's like he's, either he's jumping out the window or you are. Yeah. Oh, I either am. way, it's I a am. fucking I am it's a it bloody goes, story. I am before it goes insane. I've seen I've seen women like Mel Gibson on white wine. I've seen it with my own eyes. <laughs> yeah, down the Rotherham city centre. In, there, the, in that club it, your dad used to run, the Hip and Happer. The Hip and Happer? <laughs> yeah. That's, 
<laughs> That's exactly the club that he would have. Yes, of course. Makes yeah. perfect sense. Yeah, the walls are corduroy. Oh, dear. A lot of Chesterfields in there. I mean, the couches, of course. <laughs> yeah, and the scum. Maybe. It's like, yeah, don't you see? Because, you know, the wordplay, and no one ever gets it. And he's always devastated. And like, power to him for still, like, fucking opening up first thing every morning. Every day he fucking puts, he puts in the hours. And it crushes him. But he sticks to it. It's the only thing he has left at his age. He's, he, had the t- well, he had the, you know, the money, and that's what he chose to sunk, sink it into. He could have made a smarter decision. He knows he's made his bed. I kind of respect him for it, but it's still, it's very sad to see when I go and visit him. Sorry, your dad's 46. <laughs> Damien, you're, you're 15 years old. That sounds funny if we just leave it there, and it's, it's never funny. Awful. It just stops. I don't, what, what am I, t- none of this is funny. Oh, okay. Oh. You know nothing about what it means to edit this shit, Damien, so don't ever give me that fucking shit again, all right? Keep it to yourself. Better it, blow it out your ass. Damien, only when you go stop. into this pod- podcast's coding can you see how derivative and fucking lazy it is. I've printed this shit out. I can tell you mathematically why what you say is fucking terrible. I have circles you overlapping to hear other it? circles, and failure is where those circles touch one another, and that is where we are, where those circles <laughs> touch one another. The zone I call failure. Was it? Was it? I can't, don't remember the name of the movie, but it was... Um, Braveheart. No, it wasn't Braveheart. It was some fucking schlocky fucking... I don't want to say... Lethal Weapon 2. I want to say... I think it's like, that's my dad, or something like that. Max Max Thunderdome. What? That's your dad? <laughs> what do you mean? No, the, the name of the movie is like, that's my dad, or something like that. It was like, but he was in the sequel where he plays Mark Wahlberg's dad, which I thought was quite interesting. So you, oh, wow. He's playing yeah, two, the, two fucking yeah, psycho wretched bastards fucking... together. I can't diss him too much, because... He did cast Willem Dafoe as Jesus, so I think it, well, it just shows you, you know, Hollywood has this sort of reputation of being a bastion of liberal thinking or anything, and it's not. I mean, I'm sure there are people there who do believe in all that shit, but... I think that the fact that there's any... It's, not, you it's, know, it's a business place, really. It's just... I mean, Mel, you know, Mel Gibson, he, who fucking... He, he can still make money, so he's allowed back. If he was fucking really, really done... You know, if he he went to jail for raping somebody or something, and he was back out, he'd never work again, right? Because the public opinion would be, would be against him too strong. But because he only hit a woman and he only said some stuff about Jews, there's enough people who don't really care about that enough or just don't know about it enough, where it's sort of like, yeah, we can still put him into some movies. He's still somewhat bankable. Oh yeah, lest we forget, obviously he hit, you know. He hit the hit that woman carrying you know with the child, but she didn't drop the child, so it's not it wasn't an egregious offence. I mean, that's what she says. He all we know is that he pleaded guilty to battery. Right. Okay. Not of the child. Not of the baby. I mean, it's definitely ex- well. No. I, no. <laughs> it, no. What he did was he grabbed the kid by its ankles and he swung it into her. But it don't. It was Mel Gibson's kid, so you know it's not going to die or anything. It's like made out of metal. Yeah, well, see, the thing is, like, it was close to the stairwell, and he actually, you know, he caught, the head of the, steel. he caught the head of the child on the banister, so it really interrupted the swing. So she, she wasn't hit with full force. I would say maybe, like, 30%. She got off quite lightly. It wasn't really that damaging. She got, got away with a little scuff to the fucking, to her chops, but that was it. You know? Counts as battery, but it wasn't too traumatic. I mean, he's just lucky that, you know, the arresting officer was Murtaugh. And he wrote a reasonable report. He didn't write about all the fucking teeth everywhere. Ah, uh, oh, Mr. Mel Gibson. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, you know. The funny thing is, is when I was a kid and I used to love Lethal Weapon, I never really understood. I never understood at all. In fact, thinking about it, how much better of an actor Joe Pesci was. Unfortunately, for, for me, I come from a completely different background. I really rate Joe Pesci for, for his performance in the Home Alone movies. I wasn't watching okay, Lethal yeah. Weapon at that time, so okay. I'm a little bit too fucking milk toast for this conversation, I'm afraid to oh, say. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, well, what should we do next week? I do not know. Let's do remaking Hear No Evil, See No Evil. Okay. That'd be interesting. I wouldn't mind watching that again. We talked about the Richard Pryor, Gene Wilder thing, right? <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Mel Gibson See you next and Danny week. Glover. <laughs> All right. Thanks very much. See you next week.